So hi, welcome back. We are back in turbulence modeling. So in the last video, we talked about some of the production term in the uh, transport of K, which is the uh, turbulent kinetic energy as well as epsilon. So we didn't elaborate too much on uh, the math part, but I mean, as far as tensors are concerned, but roughly you should get an intuitive feel of what these are talking about. So since we have done all this math, what does this imply? and so what's the application all right so if you look at the cft textbook the uh this one which is called uh computational fluid dynamics by tu yo and liu um they wrote in their book that okay here's a comment this uh k epsilon is the most widely used and well of course as with every model these are experimentally fitted uh, and this k-epsilon model works well so to take note yeah it works well for predicting thin shear layers boundary layers duct flows okay so these are very uh, very classic kind of flows um, boundary layer flows duct flows these are good okay and it shows that the for confined flows um, the k-epsilon model works well that means like flows in a pipe, which are very common for our engineering uh, hmm, applications. But for flow separation, where you talk about um, airfoils, for example, the aeroplane wings, or flow past a sphere or cylinder, um, or a backstep, where let's use the paint, where there's a sudden adverse pressure gradient meaning to say the, the pressure changes a lot. For example, you have a backstep uh, facing flow, something like this, where flow is coming from here, and then it's flowing here, and then it's, there will be some separation, some sudden expansion. So you see that the pressure changes very dramatically over here, somewhere there, okay? It's just a rough guess, nothing to, uh, nothing to, uh, yeah, precise about it. But here is where K epsilon model will fail. Uh, so flow past a sphere, maybe uh, it might fail. Uh, flow past a cylinder, it might fail. Okay, you may not predict. You may over predict or under predict some things. Uh, flow past an airfoil, uh, aeroplane wing, it may fail. But for the most part, where you have like flow in a straight pipe. K epsilon model works very well. And um, for the other flow patterns, you may need other models that will uh, deal with the closure problem slightly differently. And it will not assume the isotropic assumption, which this standard K epsilon model does assume. So let's, let's talk about applications straight away. Uh, let's say you have a uh, K epsilon model you want to solve, you have the Reynolds average, the uh, Navier-Stokes equations, and then you have two more equations, the K equation and the epsilon equations. So with two more partial differential equations, you're going to need more boundary conditions. How are we going to deal with that? Well, uh, some of the boundary conditions we need to know. Uh, of course, we need to know initial conditions and we need to know uh, sort of a boundary condition as well. So what are these boundary conditions? Well, um, if you're talking about a pipe flow, yeah, if you're talking about pipe flow, uh, these are some of the things you can find online uh, by SimScale. And we should of course note that these are boundary conditions for the inlet because uh, as you know, this is a partial differential equation of k and epsilon across the whole pipe. So there will be a k profile and epsilon profile across the whole pipe. It's not some single uniform value. So for inlet boundary conditions, these are these are what have been found. Okay, so something like this. You have a high turbulence case. Okay, this one I'll put into the description, so don't worry. A high turbulence case. The intensity is between 5 and 20%. Now, what are these intensity? Uh, okay, I should have copied this somewhere. Never mind, I will go online. It should be, yes. 
So a turbulence intensity is as follows. If you have k, and it goes into 3 over 2 times the, uh, what do you call it, average kinetic energy of some sort, and it's multiplied into some sort of turbulence intensity. Okay? This uh, average kinetic uh, energy. So the mean velocity u can be calculated as follows. It is uh, just equals to um, ux uh, uy uz. So basically, um, for a pipe, it can be the superficial velocity, which is the volume divided by area. I think that that will be a good guess for this mean velocity u. So you can plug that into the k uh, formula, and this i it will depend on what are the what is the case you're talking about. So for flows in not so complex geometry or low speed flow, for example, flow in large pipe, we can use a value between one and five percent. So these are some of the guidelines available in this uh, guide yeah, online. And you'll find similar guides for uh, for this on the CFD online as well. This is some wiki, uh, wiki page. All right. Um, and then, of course, you can use the Reynolds number to estimate the intensity. And that works just as fine as well. And it's, inside, it's found inside this number one reference, which is an ANSYS guide. Uh, ANSYS is another, C, it's another uh, solver, another program to help with uh, CFD as well. But uh, yeah, it can be used for, you know, this, pr this principle can be applied across more than ANSYS or COMSOL. Uh, any other CFD program will be okay. So all we have to do is just plug in the I and estimate the mean velocity, the bulk mean velocity, mind you, the bulk mean velocity, where it's an average velocity, of course. Then we can plug this in and find some value of K. All right. So epsilon, that will be just as follows. C mu, and C mu is uh, taking a value of 0 0.009. Okay. Uh, yeah, C mu takes a value of 0 0.09. And then you can you know plug this K in, which we calculated earlier, to find uh, this value. C mu, just a constant 0 0.09. L is a turbulent length scale. So it describes a large eddy containing it talks about the length scale of what's the largest eddies you can find in the flow. So well uh for us in the pipe flow, it's already given as 0 0.07 times the hydraulic mean diameter. It means it doesn't just work for circular pipes, it can work for square shaped pipes or any other shaped pipes. You just got to find the hydraulic mean diameter, which I believe is for for A over P or something like that. So over the wetted perimeter, four, 4 times the area over the wetted perimeter, that should give you the hydraulic mean diameter. So you plug this all in, you'll find the K at the inlet, the epsilon at the inlet, and the K at the inlet. So this only applies for pipe flow, right? This only applies for pipe flow. So first you may find K first. So the k equals to three by two, u i and u, and that's squared. I can be approximated as five percent for pipe flow. So that's just a recap. U equals mean velocity. So for pipe flow, can mean uh, volume, flow rate. Divide by area. Okay. We well, should make should make a rough kind of sense for that. Okay, so um, that's the mean velocity. So we can just uh, use an estimation of that. Alright, and what, what does uh, turbulence intensity actually mean? It means uh, how much uh, this uh, this uh, what do you call that? The fluctuating part, how, how much uh, does it compare to let's say the mean velocity? Okay, so with a higher turbulence intensity, it means that the fluctuating part is way bigger, right? That makes sense, right? So, yep, 
uh, then epsilon once you do that once you plug in the value of k epsilon can then be calculated as c mu to the power of 3 by 4 okay times k to the power of 3 by 2 divided by l now this is for pipe flow and at the inlet okay of course c mu is simply 0 0.09 to the power of 3 by 4 okay, 0 0.09 this k is whatever we find and this l is just 0 0.07 times the hydraulic mean diameter so this is basically a very quick uh, video showing you how to apply the k epsilon model to a to find the boundary conditions i mean it talks about boundary conditions and how we can apply this k epsilon model potentially to solve a cfd problem in the pipe flow so that's all i have for you uh, talk about very simple the very simplest cases of the k epsilon model the very classic cases of uh, pipe flow um yeah in the uh, and this is just basic introduction uh, for turbulence modeling Okay, so of course there are other models which I have not discussed yet uh, and if the equation arises, uh, opportunity arises, uh, we might go into discussing the LES, large ID simulation models, if, uh, yeah, if I've got the time to do it. Right, so thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, uh, do leave a like and subscribe if you found these videos helpful. Thank you very much.